You are watching AmericanOutdoors.net. I'm not going to blind you with science, but I am going to give you a lesson 101 for dummies on how to restore your rusted cast iron cookware. Now this pot right here on the shelf was at a campsite we've got at the back of our property and it's been there tangled up in weeds for about a year and a half. It's been full of water and mud and sand and gunk. So you can see it's pretty bad. The inside's full of rust and it's potted and pockmarked and pitted. Now there's plenty of methods on removing rust from your cookware. Vinegar, uh, molasses, lye, extreme heat. The method I'm going to show you today is electrolysis. It's simple, straightforward, it's not labor intensive, and it's very effective. Here is what you need. A rusty pot, a plastic container, a battery charger, an anode like a rebar, a clamp or some duct tape, a small piece of wood, a metal coat hanger or baling wire, washing soda, tap water. Many times modern cookware is misunderstood in its purpose and misapplied in its use. It's heavier than most other cookware and the idea of maintenance and upkeep it can be intimidating to some folks, especially when you compare it to some of the modern examples with their throw it in the dishwasher stickless stainless features. The truth is cast iron is very versatile and with just a minimum of effort can outlive several generations of users. So it's been 24 hours, more or less, it was about this time yesterday, since I've put the pot into the water. Now between then and now, I did remove the pot one time, and I just started thinking, when I had submerged the pot originally, I did it in the upright position. And I was a little concerned that as the process evolved, the rust coming loose was just going to deposit in the bottom of the pot, forming a sediment layer, and it would inhibit the process. So I pulled it out last night, turned it at a right angle with the open face uh, pointed towards the anode, and then I resubmerged it. So before we do anything else, I will unplug the battery charger. Now I just shut it off, but I will unplug it. So we remove the battery cables, set them over on the side, and I'll pull this out. Now there is a whole lot of gunk still in this pan. So I'm going to rinse that out. Now at this point, you're looking at your piece, and if you decide that it needs a second treatment, it's perfectly acceptable to go ahead and submerge it back into the tub and start the process over again for as long as you feel it takes. Um, if not, 
then this is when you'll start the initial cleaning. And so for example, I'll just take a rag and I'll start to wipe this out. You know, kind of get rid of some of the crud, go around the walls and whatnot. Uh, you can use uh, Scotch-Brite pads, Brillo pads for just an initial cleaning. Uh, you can use small toothbrush sized uh, wire brushes to get rid of the crud, the uh, black uh, iron ox oxide oxidation, and um, <clears throat> get into nooks and crannies. Now it's very important at this point, regardless of what else happens, that you get this to some heat. Either your stove top, put it in an oven for say a half an hour at 300 degrees, even on an open fire outside. The idea is you want to get rid of all the water. You don't want any uh, residual water, even droplets, to stay for an extended time on your cast iron because it will start to rust again. So for about the last 30 minutes, I've been out here cleaning up this pot with uh, paper towels, Brillo pads, some OxyClean. Barkeeper's Friend is also a fine product for using on cast iron. But anyhow, as I've got this cleaned up, I've realized how severe the pitting is in the bottom of this pot. That also shows me how effective the electrolysis has been. Um, now, while I won't be using this for everyday cooking, uh, it's still a usable pot. Uh, so this is pretty close to ready for pre-seasoning. Now, you can go online and find all sorts of videos, practices, and recipes on properly seasoning, pre-seasoning, and getting your cookware ready uh, for using. Um, there's going to be a transcript online on our website, AmericanOutdoors.net, of this video, so if you're interested. I hope this uh, has been educational and informative for you. If you have any comments, you can leave them on uh, our website, AmericanOutdoors.net, also our Facebook page. Um, and here at the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll talk to you soon.